Hey, what's up, y'all? We are checking out Earl, Earl by DMX, the autobiography of, of DMX. Earl, this is chapter 17, A Weekend in the Hamptons. Hit that thumbs up button, and I'm going to come back with my reaction. Hit that thumbs up button. 17, A Weekend in the Hamptons. The number of stolen cars I drove around Yonkers, it's ironic the first time I was actually caught for the crime was in Long Island. It was Friday night, and I was with a friend I met at Children's Village named Dre. We had just picked up a nice Toyota Corolla limited edition and were bored with driving around Yonkers, hollering at the same girls, seeing the same niggas on the corner. So Dre came up with the idea to drive to Long Island. He said he had family we could chill with and could definitely find a hot party to go to. I didn't have a better suggestion, so we got on the highway. We probably should have thought how long a trip it was, though, because since we didn't leave New York until after 3 a.m., we didn't get to Long Island until the sun was coming up. So much for going to a party. So we just crashed out at his people's house. They lived in this small country-looking hood on the outskirts of East Hampton. In the morning, we chilled with his peoples for a little while and then decided to go get some beers. I didn't think anything of it then, but none of his family came with us. In the late 80s, the Hamptons was even more the home of the rich and the white than it is today. Even though East Hampton was probably the most metropolitan of the four towns in the area, it was still extremely unlikely to find two teenage black kids driving around in a brand new car. The rappers driving Bentley's invasion hadn't happened in the Hamptons yet. Black folks like Dre's people lived on the other side of the train tracks, and that's where the ruling townsfolk expected them to stay. But we didn't know that. I had already learned what you don't do when you're not familiar with where you are. But Dre was 15, two years younger than me. And the whole trip, he had been driving real extra, and I could tell he was thirsty to act out. When we pulled in front of the grocery store, I told him to chill. Yo, when I come back with the beer... We can go to the park or something and relax. Of course, when I came out of the store, Dre was gone. So here I was, early Saturday morning, standing in the middle of Main Street, East Hampton, holding a bag of beer. Not the move. Then, just as I started to walk up the block to look for him, I saw a police car drive past and guess who was in the back seat? This motherfucker went and got knocked. My first instinct, being the loyal kid that I was, was to try to find my way back to his people's house to get help. The problem was that I really couldn't remember where their place was. All I knew was that it was in a row of raggedy houses that didn't look like nothing nearby. And after about an hour of walking around the neighborhood getting lost, the same police car finally rolled up on me. This time, no Dre. I was still carrying that bag of beer. Hey kid, where are you going? I got some family that lives out here, I replied. Yeah, well, what do you have in the bag? Beer. Aren't you too young to be buying beer, son? Well, then you better get the guy in the store. I don't have nothing to do with that, I said with an attitude. That answer pissed them off, but I was right. There was nothing illegal about me holding an unopened bottle of beer. The clerk was the one that was supposed to get in trouble for not checking my ID. Well, you're going to have to come and show us who sold it to you then. I don't remember where the store was. Now the bullshit started. Well, why don't you let us help you then? If you don't, we're going to start taking this bottle of beer of yours a little more seriously. Uh, well, okay. I guess I can show you where. And that was my first mistake. I got into the back of the squad car with no handcuffs on or nothing. Then, of course, instead of pulling up in front of the store where I bought the beer, like they said, the cops pulled up in front of the police station. Officer, this is not where the store is. Yeah, we know. But we want you to come inside for a minute. But the store is over there. We're not going to the store anymore. Now, come inside and shut your mouth. When I got inside the precinct... They led me to a small interrogation room where they started grilling me about the car. I knew they didn't see me in it or anywhere near it, so I just kept denying everything. The only way they could know about me was if Dre told them something. I don't know anything about any car, man. I don't know nothing and I didn't do nothing. 
Are you going to make us go find your fingerprints on the door handle, boy? Then you'll be a liar. And I hate little liars. I don't give a fuck. Do whatever, man. I wasn't going to let these cops massage me more than they already had. Do what you got to do. I wasn't there. Then I saw Dre's shadow in the mirror, and I realized that the bastard was snitching me out. Hit the thumbs up button, guys. Give me a thumbs up button. Let's continue on. After a few minutes, they brought him into the room. Is that him? They asked. Yeah. He answered looking squarely at me. He stood right in front of my face. That's him. His name is Earl. I don't know what he's talking about, man. I got desperate in a hurry. That wasn't me. I was already on probation and was not trying to go to jail. That wasn't fucking me. Dre was a minor. He was getting off once a parent came to get him anyway. So why did he have to turn me in? But the most fucked up part was when his grandfather came to the station and I noticed that he was wearing a badge. Dre's grandfather worked for the sheriff's department in another county, so Dre knew he was straight all along. But it was over for me. I was getting locked up. Earl Simmons was now a convicted felon. When I was younger, my mother and her friend Thelma had me scared to death about getting locked up. Tell them about what they do to boys in jail, Thelma always said when my mother was beating my ass. Just like the officers on Alexander Street, the two of them thought a good deterrent was making me think that on the first day I walked into a jail, somebody was going to fuck me in the ass. Well, it didn't happen like that, but I did arrive at the farm with a real hard-ass attitude. Don't say nothing to me. Don't even fucking look at me. I'm not saying nothing to nobody, and I ain't going to ask you for shit, so don't ask me for shit. The farm, the Minimum Security Division of Suffolk County Correctional Facility in Yaphank, Long Island, was similar to the barges New York State used to house inmates who were convicted of nonviolent crimes like theft or drunk driving. It wasn't meant to be as a secure or restrictive as the main unit of SCCF. Instead of cells... Inmates lived in groups together in dorms or mods. You could freely associate with the other guys in your mod. Use a Walkman. Read or play cards. And while in no way did you have your freedom, life in the farm, at least on the minor block where I was, wasn't the most difficult experience for me. Especially after what I had been through over the past two years in industry and McCormick. Now that I was grown, though, the hardest thing to endure was being without pussy for all those weeks and months. That was tough. There were some pretty female corrections officers in jail, too, and a lot of them were freaks. The freak COs would be the ones that lived right in the same hood as you and knew all of your peoples from around the way. Behind bars was the only place that I ever considered paying for some ass because I definitely would have tossed a couple of dollars to one of them to knock it down. So this is uh, Earl, autobiography of Dan Max. You can check it out on Audible uh, whenever you get a chance. It's really good, man. Wow, I didn't know he, uh, my homeboy just ratted him out. That's cool, but <laughs> that's why they always say, if you're gonna do crime, do it by yourself. Don't do it with nobody. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're by yourself, you ain't gonna snitch on yourself. But if you have somebody that's with you, and they get scared, they're gonna rat you out. So, best to do your crime by yourself. Anyway, what do y'all think about this book, man? What do y'all think about the late, great DMX? Leave your comments and subscribe to Charles and Ezra.